Scott Davis has inspired me to have some fun in the sun, but I won't be building a snowman. Instead, with your help, I'll be examining the effects of sunlight on bottles of water. As you know, February is often considered one of the coldest months in the northern hemisphere. Fortunately, the skies are frequently clear and there's plenty of intense sunlight available for solar thermal experiments. This experiment was done in January, but you could repeat it in February and tell me what you discover. Take two plastic bottles, paint one black and cover the other one with black polyester felt. Fill them both with cold tap water and set them outside early in the morning several hours before sunrise. Take ambient and bottle temperature readings every 15 minutes and plot the readings on a graph. Also make an estimate of the sunlight intensity and shadows cast onto the bottle during the day. We'll approximate the percent of maximum sunlight available by assuming that 1000 watts per square meter per hour of sunlight are available on a clear sunny day. To facilitate this experiment, I'll be cheating. By using a data logger, some temperature probes, and a sunlight flux monitor. But you can do the same experiment with a few thermometers and your imagination. How will the temperature of the bottle painted black respond to sunlight? How will the temperature of the bottle covered in felt respond to sunlight? Which bottle will have the greatest heat gain? Which bottle will have the greatest heat loss? It's January 30th, uh, 2011, and we've been taking some temperature readings of bottles of water today. Uh, you can see these uh, two bottles. Uh, one is painted black, and the other one is covered with polyester felt. That's that one over there. So we're taking temperature readings of these bottles <coughs> at uh, 10 second intervals uh, during the day. Uh, we want to see uh, how the temperature is affected by the, uh, the different uh, coatings. I, I don't know what it's going to mean or anything, but uh, so we'll get some idea of, of how uh, heat is collected from the sun and also retained. Uh, the idea is that it's covered with polyester felt, maybe it'll retain the heat a little better. I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out. This has not been an ideal day for solar thermal experimenting. Clouds and shadows make the interpretation of data difficult. If you decide to repeat this test, I recommend finding a cold day with ample, unblocked sunshine. First, let's look at the light we have to work with. The intensity of sunlight between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. hovers around 55 percent and then it drops off to about 35 percent for the next 20 minutes. Between 10.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. the intensity of sunlight levels off at about 60 percent. After 1 p.m. scattered clouds and shadows diminish the light striking the bottles and the average flux intensity drops to a minimum at sunset. Okay, now that we understand the general pattern of sunlight throughout the day where the ambient temperature remains close to 38 degrees Fahrenheit, let's see how the water temperature in our bottles change. Notice the water temperature inside both bottles stabilize close to 47 degrees Fahrenheit at 10.15 a.m when sunlight is at 40 percent. After 10.15 a.m. clouds disappear and sunlight intensity hovers around 60 percent till about 1 p.m. During this period of increased light water temperature inside both bottles rise. The temperature of water inside the bottle painted black rises faster than the bottle covered in felt. Why do you think this happens? After 1 p.m., sunlight intensity changes in an erratic fashion, as does the water temperature inside both bottles. After 4 p.m., the heat losses through the painted bottle are greater than the heat losses from the bottle covered in felt. Why do you think this happened? 
If you understand why one bottle is optimized to gain heat and the other bottle is optimized to prevent heat loss, you understand basic solar thermal concepts. Now if you design a system that maximizes heat gain while minimizing heat loss, you'll have the best of both worlds. Folks call me a maverick, yes I ain't too diplomatic, I just never been the kind to go along. Just avoiding confrontation for the sake of confirmation, and I'll admit I tend to sing a different song. Sometimes you just can't be afraid to wear a different hat. If Columbus sat in plotting, this old world might still be flat. Nothing adventure, nothing game. Sometimes you got to go against the grain. Well, I've been accused of making my own rules. There must be rebel blood just running through my veins. But I ain't no hypocrite, cause what you see is what you get. And that's the only way I know to play the game. Oh no, it took much ridicule for building this great ark. But after 40 days and 40 nights, he was looking pretty smart. Sometimes it's best to brave the wind and the rain. By having the strength to go against the grave. There's more folks in a few who share my point of view But they're worried if they're gonna sink or swim They'd like to buck the system But the deck is stacked against them And they're a little scared to go out on a limb But if you're gonna make a difference If you're gonna leave your mark You can't follow like a bunch of sheep You gotta listen to your heart Go busting in like old John Wayne Sometimes you got to go against the grain Nothing venture, nothing gain. Sometimes.